I'll be talking today about um, effective ESRI geometric network tracing with SME. So a little bit of information first um, about Avista Utilities. We operate in uh, Washington, Idaho, and Oregon in the northwestern United States. Um, there's a tiny dot up there with Vancouver if you're looking for where you are. Um, and uh, we do both electric and gas transmission and distribution. We have uh, a little bit more than 300,000 electric customers and gas customers, eight hydroelectric generation facilities. And uh, we've used GIS since about 1992, and we've used FME since 2004. So I want to talk a little bit about ESRI's geometric networks in the gas and electric utilities. Um, it's a really useful tool to have the uh, geometric networks in the ESRI data model uh, because you can do a lot of tracing. I don't know, are you guys generally familiar with the network models? Yes, okay, well I won't spend any extra time then. But basically for anyone who, who isn't familiar with it, um, you, you have a geometric network and there's also a logical network underneath that can track different, um, different kinds of tracing and so on. So you can do, using your same geometric network, you can run different kinds of traces for different kinds of, of data models. And um, in our implementation of ESRI's GIS system, uh, we uh, have a versioned SD data set and we have a great, a huge number of states, uh, close to 10,000 sometimes at a time. Um, so um, we, that creates some performance issues. Uh, and also it means that if we think of a new reason that we wanna trace our network, um, we have no way to go back into our network and set up um, new tracing situations because you need to get back uh, to a zero state in order to do that. Uh, there's tools in ArcGIS, of course, to do tracing, and they're really useful for especially single traces where you set a, a start and set some barriers, uh, or you have barriers set up already and you can run it. But I've found that in general, without using uh, code, it's hard to do really large scale uh, network analysis using the geometric network. Uh, and especially if your system is, hasn't been set up the way you want to do tracing, um, there's no way really to kind of add that information in after the fact. Um, so in, in this case, when I found other tracing situations that I want to do with my ESRI geometric network, I turned to FME's network topology calculator. So the example I want to talk about today is uh, one from the gas system. I need to find uh, a bunch of gas fittings that need to be replaced. And I want to find all the customers downstream of those gas fittings and notify them of the work that needs to be done. So um, in this case, in our gas network, we don't have a flow network um, implemented in our gas network. So um, we don't know the direction that the gas is going um, in our ESRI geometric network. We only know that things are connected. So it, using the ESRI tools, I don't know right off the bat what's downstream from a fitting. Um, so in order to do this in, the ES, in, in ArcMap, I would have to loop through all of my meters, set barriers at all of my fittings, and try to discover which ones stopped and throw away all the rest of them. Um, and in this case, there's probably only about 1% of the fittings that I need to investigate, so that's a really inefficient way to do it. And in general, uh, the looping takes quite a while. So, um, the first thing in using FME to set up these network models using the, the geometric networks from ESRI, you wanna be really selective about the data. The, the processing is fairly memory intensive. And so um, in this particular situation, I'm using only particular kinds of pipe filtering out by attributes. And I'm also doing spatial filters for uh, area of work polygons just to condense down the data as much as possible before I do my analysis. And the other thing I wanna do is limit my attribution. Obviously we have a tremendous amount of attribution on our pipe data and I wanna throw away as much of that as possible before I start my FMA uh, workbench so that um, I don't have to keep all those attributes in memory as I go through my workspace. Um, 
the, the uh, network topology calculator seems to handle these pretty well, but afterwards I'm gonna do a hu huge amount of uh, list building and aggregating, and I wanna make sure that I refine this down to just what I care about. So um, the basic trick for uh, simulating these uh, logical networks that ESRI has in FME is I'm gonna use the geometry that I bring in with my line features, and then I'm gonna um, use a bunch of geometry kind of tricks in order to um, simulate the, the barriers that get created on the flow network. So in this case, what I've done is I've, I've taken these T's that I have, and I, chop, I, I buffer them just by a tiny bit, a half a foot, and then I chop that out of my pipe network. So by using the line on area overlayer, I throw away all my intersecting uh, little chunks of line that intersect the tiny buffers, and that essentially creates a gap in my pipe network, um, and that's gonna create a barrier. So everywhere I wanna create a, a barrier in my network, I just throw away a tiny piece of pipe. And then uh, the other thing you need to do to do this in FME is to prep your data. Uh, the, network val the network calculator tool in FME doesn't do complex edges, so if your uh, linear network has complex edges, you can use the chopper tool, and you can chop by vertices. So in this case, I've chopped everything, everything up. Everywhere there's a vertex, it chops it into individual line segments. So I, all my line segments now just have an, a start and end point. Um, and that essentially creates simple line features out of complex edges. Um, the other thing you need to look for is, of course, self-intersects and that you have uh, everything coincident in geometry. Luckily, if you've already got a geometric ne network with uh, your ESRI data set, your data should be pretty connected already. But the geometry validator is a great tool for that um, to check a, a wide variety of conditions uh, in your network. And then the easy part is to create the network. There's a tool called the Network Topology Calculator tool. And it basically has no parameters whatsoever. Uh, you just need to give it a network ID attribute that you want to pass on to your features as they go through. So this just takes linear features and it finds all the ones that are geometrically connected to one another and says that that's a network. You can also do a group by in there if you have specific things you want to deal with. Um, So basically, once you've created your networks of all the pipes, you need to pass that information on to some of the point features that are otherwise connected to it. So in this case, um, I took those, those uh, little buffers that were my T's, and I used a center point replacer to make them back into points after making them into areas. And I use another point on line, area, a point on line overlayer to figure out uh, which line now those points are still connected to. Um, and that will pass the network ID attribute onto the point feature as well. Um, and then what I need to do is also find the meters that are affected by these, uh, these same networks. So I have my TID that, um, and it knows what network it participates in. And only one of my linear features that participates in the network uh, knows what TID it's associated with. So I actually use the feature merger to spread that uh, TID along to all the linear features in that network by sending the ones that, um, the ones that are connected uh, through. And by, by feature merging just by network ID, it, it passes that attribute on to every other uh, feature in that same group. Um, when you use the chopper tool, sometimes you'll end up with zero length line features, and so I just throw those away at the end. So if you have uh, some peculiar geometry, sometimes it'll just snap those linear features into a point. So you can throw those away. Um, and then in the same respect, now that my linear features know what TID they've participated in due to their network, I can just use uh, another point on, area over, point on line over, overlayer to, uh, to check all the gas meters as well and figure out which ones of those participate in the same network as these TIDs. So in the end, by checking overlaps with my pipe, I have gas meters that have their own uh, object ID. They know what 
to a T ID they're connected to, and they know what uh, network ID they are connected to as well. So here's an example of a result. Um, you can see all the orange pipe there is participating in a single network, and all the purple squares there are the meters that are affected by it, and so they're all the ones that intersect with that same network. And you can see the orange circle there is the T ID. And in the little blown up portion there, you can see the gap. That's the gap I created in my pipe by chopping out the small amount of buffered T. And that's what created my barrier uh, to begin with. And that's what makes the network topology calculator stop and only consider this one network, because it can't jump over that little gap. So here's a little snapshot of some of the results. You can see all the T's in my network, and um, the networks that belong only to the, the T's themselves, and all the other pipe is unaffected. And you can see it's identified all of the meters as well downstream of those T's and nothing on the other side of them. So using this, basically the same kind of uh, strategy, I'm able to do quite a bit of network tracing on my ESRI geometric network that I am not able to do in ArcMap itself. So uh, again, because I'm hampered by not having flow in my gas network, I'm able to, to do a lot of work in FME to simulate that. For example, finding meters served by different gas pressure zones, um, finding emergency shutoff islands, so finding places where if we shut off a bunch of valves in an emergency, other areas would inadvertently be shut off as well and lose their, uh, lose their connectivity. Um, I do a lot of network health checks because that network topology calculator really requires very clean data. And it, as a byproduct, it finds all your really bad data. Uh, and then also isolated steel pipe. So looking for areas of, of our gas networks where we have gas pipe that's made only of steel that isn't connected properly to provide protection, we can easily find this in a large scale way. When I've tried to do the same analysis in ArcMap, uh, it can take up to 12 hours to run on some of our networks, and I can do about the same thing in 15 minutes using an FME workbench. So just a few tips and tricks if you try this method. Um, for very large data sets, you'll run, want to run the chopper and the network topology calculator in separate workbenches. Let that uh, memory purge happen in between. Um, and the other thing is when you explode all your complex edges into these tiny little simple features, you get a lot of features. And so as soon as you run it through the network topology calculator, you can use that um, use the feature merger just with the object ID of those and kind of feed the network ID back onto your original features and then use them to pass through the workbench. That way you reduce your feature count quite a bit. And then um, if you're doing some complex kinds of intersecting where you want to test a bunch of different stuff on these networks, um, it's really nice to do a bunch of like point online overlayers and then do some aggregate, use the aggregator to build lists to test a bunch of conditions in a list searcher uh, to see if a bunch of different things are happening on your network. And that gets pretty memory intensive, but again, if you're careful about what attributes you bring along, it works pretty well. So that's all I have. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions, and if anyone sees any improvements in the workbench or has some other tools that they use for the same thing, I'd love to hear them. Right, so in this example, he's asking how, when I, when I chop, obviously T is an intersection like this, what about all this, this other stuff here? In this example, I already knew some attribution about my pipe, and so I essentially ignored all my main pipe to begin with, and that helped me not have to do a bunch of analysis about which side of the T I was on. Yeah, so I was, if, you're, if you're careful but you're about attributes, yeah. it makes the job a lot easier. Have you used FME to help cut down on loops in your uh, electric network? Um, I haven't. Our electric network doesn't tolerate loops. Um, we have an outage management system running on it, so uh, we, we have to fix them right away. But um, you could use the same thing to, to look for those, right? And then, um, I, in fact, I found um, 
when I, when I have conflict areas and I get pipe that's duplicated and stacked on top of each other yet connected in the geometry, um, this one finds those because it creates a little loop in there, right? And so you have a network that you know doesn't exist and it's telling you that you have this network. So it's, you might give it a try. Any other questions?